praise the Lord. We want to welcome you this morning to our weekly television broadcast here at the Uganda Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Pastor Daniel Chisa, and I'm coming from Namlanda, New City Ministries. And our church is called Cornerstone New City Church. It is 20 kilometers on Entebbe Road. It's very easy to see. You come off at Namlanda stage, and our landmark is the Holy Cross Supermarket. We are right opposite it, just besides the highway, the Entebbe Highway. And uh, we're always there every Sunday morning. We have two services. We have one English service, which is at 8 a.m., and uh, it goes for two hours up to 10. So you can come if you're an early riser, and you, you have some other work to do. Our Sunday service, English only, is very ideal for you. Our second service is from 10.30 to 12.30. Again, we, we keep our services uh, uh, sweet and short and uh, able to help you do some other things. Uh, we realize some of you have only Sunday as your free day um, on the weekly calendar and we want to respect your time also for fellowship but also for your family. And uh, we will be here every Sunday. I believe we're going to have a good time. And while the program is going on, you can also reach us uh, uh, by SMS, by WhatsApp, 0775-581144, And we will be more than happy to communicate, pray with you, uh, love on you, and uh, minister to you. This morning, I want to introduce myself by bringing to you the ministry of the word. And I want to speak about the gospel of the kingdom because I believe that uh, being uh, on television is uh, a blessing, not only to the people of my church, but to the entire nation. UBC is an, a national broadcaster and with the internet and uh, all these uh, digital uh, inventions you are able to see and watch this program online and uh, in many other places and I want to 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 submit to you that in this program we'll be bringing the ministry of the word of course prayer and other things as produced during this show but mainly the gospel of the kingdom we want to be more open to, to all of us all Bible believing you may be a Pentecostal you may be an evangelical, you may be an independent, you may be going to a congregational church, you may be going to whatever church, however religious you are. You may not be even a church goer. You may be going to a mosque, maybe you're going to a Hindu temple. There is life in the word and in this program, I submit to you the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, I want to encourage you to tune in every Sunday morning you may not be even a church going every Sunday. Maybe you only go to church a few occasional times within the year. Or you used to go to church. You don't go. It doesn't matter where you are. I want to submit to you. This will be a program that is going to bless your life. I've uh, put down a few scriptures that I want us to read. And uh, I believe you're going to be blessed. Our first scripture is coming from the book of Luke. Look, I, I brought my hard copy Bible uh, so that my batteries don't run out. Luke 17, 21, and uh, this is the Lord himself, and he's responding, you know, a bit of uh, uh, context of this scripture. He's responding to uh, one of his greatest destructors, uh, that was the Pharisees, and uh, they asked him a question, and in verse 21 of Luke 17, our Lord responds to this. Let's read from verse 20. He says, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. See, this is a, a very key scripture for us uh, when the Bible, when the Lord himself tells us that the kingdom of God is inside of us, it is an encouragement. Sometimes we would love to think the kingdom of God is somewhere. We, we have to go somewhere to see the kingdom of God. We have to go somewhere. 
to experience the kingdom of God. But the Lord is teaching us and is showing us that the kingdom of God is within us. Other versions would say the kingdom of God is among you, is in your midst, is at hand. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within your heart. The kingdom of God does not come with observation. It is not only through things that we see the kingdom of God is the, by the power of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is invisible. God is invisible. He's everywhere. He's here with us. He's where you are. He's through the television uh, airwaves and he's ministering to you. He's ministering to us. We are ministering to him. The kingdom of God is not with observation. The kingdom of God is within us. That means the kingdom of God can be within us and we don't even know. That's why this program is here. That's why we got this time to speak the word of God to you, to tell you that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is inside of us. And uh, this will give us three things that I want to speak to us about. The kingdom of God is within us, number one. So the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God and the power of the cross are inseparable. See, the only way God, a holy God, a holy God can live inside us and unholy people is when something has happened to us. And the Bible says that the holy cannot be put together with the unholy because the unholy will make the holy unholy. And if you are going to put the two together, either The kingdom of God is within us. Meaning, the holy can make us holy. The holy can make the unholy holy. That's one key thing that should should interest you and me that is something that should interest you and me the kingdom of god the holiness of god the goodness of god however you view the kingdom of god like we view the kingdom of god uh, in so many ways sometimes according to our backgrounds religious backgrounds or unreligious backgrounds that's how we view the kingdom of god when we talk about god as africans when we talk about god we think about our gods with small g we, we could talk about the kingdom of God and we think about our kings because there is the word kingdom. We talk about the kingdom of God, we think about a big God, a big father, a father figure. I don't know how you view the kingdom of God like. Some of us, we have grown up in church so, for so long, when we talk about the kingdom of God, we are looking at healing, provision, prosperity, breakthroughs, miracles i don't know how you look at the kingdom of god like but the bible is teaching us that the kingdom of god is within us so however you look at the kingdom of god do you look at it as god in his kingdom abundance provision all the streets in heaven are of god well the kingdom of god is at hand is within you that means the wealth of heaven can be inside of you do you look at the kingdom of god as health health and abundance and wellness then the kingdom of god is within you you can receive the wellness the abundance the wholeness how do you view the kingdom of god like do you view the kingdom of god as like fatherhood sonship uh, some of us come from broken families and broken homes maybe you grew up as an orphan and you say the kingdom of god when you talk about the kingdom of god you're looking at a father figure somebody who is on uh, on top of that kingdom the 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 king in that kingdom maybe you 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 come from uh, a chiefdom a kingdom and you you're thinking about a king and you're thinking about royalty 
and you're saying, well, that is what the kingdom of God is to you. And the Bible say the kingdom of God is within us. Royalty is within us. The power of God is within us. The provision of God is within us. The abundance of God is within us. The goodness of God is within us. That is the gospel that we're going to be preaching on this program every Sunday morning. That's why you don't have to miss. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is within us. This is what we exactly talking about. You are not able to go to church, but the kingdom of God has come into your house, into your living room, into your bedroom, into your office, into your workplace. The kingdom of God has come onto your street. I don't know where you're watching from. Onto your computer, onto whatever gadget that you're using, onto your, your smartphone. The kingdom of God is within us, is among us, and God wants us to benefit Benefit from the kingdom of God and the perspective that you have of the kingdom of God is never wrong there is nothing like wrong or right if you view the kingdom of God in view of the power of God you are not wrong listen to this scripture this is the apostle Paul in the book of uh, first Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 4 listen to how the apostle Paul teaches he says when I came to you if we could pick it from verse number 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we read from verse number 2. He says, When I came to you, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in witness, in fear, and in much trembling. Okay? And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. See? When... The Apostle Paul came sometimes, it doesn't mean that when the kingdom of God is with us, we will not face hardships. This is the Apostle Paul. You may be going through a hard time right now. The Apostle Paul says, when I came to you, I determined to know nothing. In fact, I was with you in witness. You may be in a weak position, in weakness, not physical weakness. It may be financial weakness. What you need to know before we go into our last scripture, I need to remind you, it is a Sunday morning. We have two beautiful, wonderful services. We have the 8 a.m. service. It is English only. You don't want to miss. We have all people coming in that um, uh, are very comfortable with English and they are being blessed. And then it comes from 8 a.m. to 10. It's a two-hour service. Uh, trust me, you'll be blessed. We have tailor-made it, knowing that uh, you, you have to keep time, we want to keep time, we want your time productive. In two hours, you're going to be blessed. The word is wonderful, the praise and worship, and everything that you need is in there. And then our second service starts at 10.30 a.m., and then by 12.30, we are finished. And the pastors and the leaders stay behind to minister and to pray, and to love on you and counseling, because we understand some of you only got a Sunday. On, on your working calendar and um, so it, but in the week also we have the midweek service which is a Wednesday and we teach the word it's also the Israel altar we pray for Israel it's a wonderful time and uh, we have our prayer warriors uh, with the prayer altar on Tuesday uh, from uh, 7 p.m. Uh, we have a prayer altar until 10 because it's a good time you can come from work we our services are all inclusive we, we tailor make them to minister to you. And we know that people can be there from five because there are some other people that don't have a job, that are looking for a job. They could spend the whole day at church. But how about you who is working? You also need to be fed. You also need to be part of the ministry. You may say, uh, that is not my mother church, but our church is just by the roadside and we are reaching out to you. 
On your way back home to Entebbe, you can stop by. On your way back to Kampala from work, you can stop by. It's by the roadside, it's by the highway, there is enough parking, you can cut the, 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 the hate of the jam by staying about for two hours, you are spending it in church, it is, uh, it is counterproductive, you are not wasting anything. So I encourage you to come and join us. And thank God we on UBC, you get to know us more and we will get to know you more. You can reach us for prayer uh, on 0775581144. It would be good if you send a message or a WhatsApp and you don't call because as the program goes on, there are so many people that also want to be ministered to. So if you can maybe record a, a voice clip, it would be good. Then we could answer you also in a voice clip. Uh, through prayer and, and that would be good so I, I told you about prayer and I said the Lord was asked about prayer and it's amazing that his disciples asked him about prayer and not how to perform miracles you see you could think they could they could say oh show us how to perform miracles but they realize that all the power comes from prayer but it, it, what he teaches them is the Lord's Prayer and the Lord's Prayer is amazing he says uh, our Father who art in heaven allowed be thy name thy kingdom come see thy kingdom come it, it's one thing for the kingdom of god to be inside of us but the other thing that has to do with the kingdom of god is that the kingdom of god if it is inside of us it has to manifest that's why i was telling you about in our last scripture i said the kingdom of god has to manifest the word has to become flesh and the word became flesh and dwelt among us john 1 14 if you said the lord has blessed me we are yet to see the lord blessing you see because there is not enough for for there is not enough in heaven for you just to take away for one year and there is no more supply heaven has more than enough so if the lord blessed you last year we want to see him bless you again if the lord healed you last year we want to see him heal you again until you are whole it is good to be healed. It is better to stay healthy. So when we pray and say, your kingdom come, we are literally saying, the Lord manifest your healing outside of us. We have received it. The kingdom of God is inside of us. But we want to see the kingdom of God manifested. You have healed me. Use me to heal others. That's why the Bible says, you will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. You have provided for me, now use me to provide for others. Provide for others when I pray for them. He told Abraham, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. And, and this is what the word of God is saying. And it, the kingdom of God has to be manifested. The kingdom of God has to be seen. And this is the scripture that we're about to read, Romans 14, verse 17. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, righteousness, is, you would say, how can righteousness be seen? Because righteousness means to be right. It means to do right. You see, if you are righteous, it starts first of all by an imputed righteousness. Righteousness in God begins by an imputed righteousness. And thereafter, we come to a righteousness that can be seen. The righteousness comes to a place where it can be seen. See, So the righteousness, the kingdom of God is righteousness, is peace, is joy in the Holy Ghost. Your righteousness will come to a place when we will see it. It will start by inside your heart. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? You know, when you, you get saved, when you receive Jesus, when you accept Jesus, you say, I'm righteous. And people will say, you? But you are still smoking. You just stopped smoking yesterday. You did A, B, C, D. You are still doing A, B, C, D. We are not sure if you are changed. But the Bible says that righteousness is right standing with God. And when you stand right with God, God stands right with you. You become what you worship. And then you be, start to become like the God that you worship. If you are hating on somebody, you begin to love them. It may take time, but it will come. The kingdom of God is not only eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace. Peace.
peace also is an abstract thing. You would say, how can you see peace? Yes, peace can be seen. Peace is not only the calmness when nothing is disturbing you. God can give you peace. The Bible says God gave uh, David peace on, on every side. There could be such peace. But true peace is seen when everything around you is falling apart, but you are still peaceful. See, when you can still praise God when your life is being torn apart. That is the peace of God. And that comes with time. That is what the Apostle Paul was saying in the scripture that we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, I came to you in weakness, I came to you. In much pain, I came to you. I come to you speaking about the kingdom of God, speaking about the power of God, speaking about the goodness of God. Yet inside of me, I had weak things. I was being torn apart. There are things that I couldn't fight back. You could be financially weak. You can't fight back the need for school fees for your children. You love your children, but you look at them and they are not going to school. This is the third time. They missed exams. They missed another year. They have to repeat a class. You are in weakness, financially weak, where the kingdom of God has come. It is not only what you take in, it is also what people will see. Because if people don't see the joy of the Lord in your life, how will the sorrowful people desire to come to the Lord? And this is the gospel of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God and the cross cannot be separated, meaning that we have to embrace the cross. You say, what do we mean? What do you mean when you say embrace the cross? We have to receive Jesus. This morning, you may be seated watching and enjoying the word of God and saying, wow, this is good teaching. This is what I really missed on every Sunday morning. And, but you need to embrace the cross. When we embrace the cross, we are coming to a place where we say, I can't do it on myself. Jesus, you need to help me. I can't do it on myself. The cross is not something to be embraced by only people that are not Christians. The, the cross is something that we have to embrace every single day. If we are going to walk a life of righteousness, remember the righteousness of God is first of all imputed onto us. When we accept what Jesus did on the cross, then whatever Jesus accomplished on the cross is given unto us. It is a divine exchange. We are justified and then we are sanctified and then we receive that glorification even when we are still here. And then number three is that we have to be able to manifest the power of God. The kingdom and the power of God cannot be separated. We have to come to a place where we manifest the power of God. The kingdom of God has to be manifested. The provision of God has to be manifested. The healing of God has to be manifested in your life. The breakthrough, the, the deliverance that you're waiting for, the miracle that you've been praying for has to be manifested. It's not only about eating, about existence. It's not about you personally. It has to take another level where you manifest it, where it goes forth where your joy is contagious, where the peace of God in your life draws people. When everybody is distracted and obstructed and torn apart because of what is going on, they look at you and you are peaceful. Same circumstances, but with the peace of God. Amid is the storm, you have the calmness. This is the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the kingdom of God. And I want to pray with you. You may be watching this morning and you say, I don't even know Jesus. I don't even know this gospel of the kingdom. I don't know if I need it. I don't know what this course means. Well, that's why I'm here. And I want to lead you in a simple prayer. Just a simple one, wherever you are. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I can't do it on myself. I can do it by myself. And I want you to help me change my life, forgive my sins, heal my sicknesses, fill me with your joy, fill me with your peace, fill me with your righteousness. Let your kingdom come into my life. Help me to serve you. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Now, I want to pray with you. Maybe you are in a place where you need provision. You are in a place where you need healing. You are in a place where you need a breakthrough. You are in a place where you need divine intervention. Now, this is, listen to this. You might be at a place where the report over your life is justified legally. You know, like you are waiting for a judgment and you pleaded guilty to something legally in court. Maybe you have a sickness in your life. Well, you just told Jesus to help you. That's the difference. The difference between you and every other person that deserves to have HIV, that deserves to have the lung cancer because they are smoking like you, that deserves to die because they committed that crime and somebody decided to pay you back by going into witchcraft and deep down in your heart you say, I deserve this sickness, I deserve to be bewitched. The difference between you and the other party is that you have called on Jesus. You have asked for forgiveness. We all go wrong. We all do mistakes. We all sin. But the power of the cross is there to set us free. And that power is there to set us free this morning. Myself and you inclusive. I want you to lay your hand where that sickness is. I want you to lay your hand upon that document that has put the report on your life. I want you to stretch out your hand. Maybe you are praying for someone. You are standing in proxy for someone that is not there. I want to pray with you in the name of Jesus. And I want you to, to believe God with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for my brother, for my sister. I want to pray for, for that gentleman, for that lady, for that boy, for that girl, for that believer, for that non-believer, for that person watching this morning who said, let me just turn on the television. Let me just listen to this new person speaking on the television. I don't know they may have something for me. Lord, I pray that you will honor them this morning. Lord, heal every sickness in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every sickness. I break every curse off of their life, legal or unlegal, in the name of Jesus. I declare the blood of Jesus upon their lives. I speak the healing anointing upon every sickness, upon every infirmity, upon every allergy, in the name of Jesus. I break every covenant off of their lives that lingers that sickness upon them. I reverse every declaration, be it legal, be it medical, be it spiritual, be it a witchcraft, a witchy uh, declaration off of your life in the name of Jesus. I reverse every counsel of the wicked one against your life in the name of Jesus. Every termination of your contract, I reverse it. Every word against your life that is not of God, I put an end to it. And I speak the power of the cross over your life. I speak the blood of Jesus to set you free from everything that is not of God. I speak the love of God into your marriage, into your family, in the name of Jesus, to turn the hearts of the children onto their parents and the hearts of the parents onto their children. I speak reconciliation into that family, into that business, into that company, into that association in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you because your kingdom is coming, not only in our hearts, but in our society, in our communities, in our businesses, and we are yet to see your goodness in the land of the living. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, and say with me, amen and amen. Uh, brethren, uh, child of God, gentleman, lady, whoever you are, sir, madam, reverend, bishop, whoever you are, honorable, your excellency, whoever's been uh, watching, uh, believer, non-believer, atheist, it doesn't matter. This is the gospel of the kingdom and you need it you have a need that only god can meet and we're gonna be here every sunday morning to speak to you same time the word of god we love you thank you for tuning in to ubc and i'm praying with you reach out to me to through my number 0775581144 remember send a message it will be better for us to communicate to many more people or send a voice clip, reach us on WhatsApp or any other thing and then we will be able to minister to you. God bless you and we will be able to uh, minister to you next Sunday. Same time, same station. Stay blessed.